Evening folks. Well, it's evening here because we just finished up a productive day getting all these floor framings done. We're almost ready to start insulating. It's gone all right. Almost. He's so optimistic. Yeah, we've got we've still got a membrane, do. the other one of them, but yeah, we have had a good day and it's we nice have. to actually start doing something. Good morning, Britain. Welcome to wet Gloucestershire. So we so planned, we planned for a day like yesterday, because <laughs> um, today is nursery day. Um, so we can get lots done. We're still plowing on though, because we have to. And it'll make us appreciate the nice weather tomorrow. Pointed him. Yes. <laughs> well, I have to wait for the boards to dry out now as well. So maybe Monday next week we could do insulation. I think we were, we, what did we say, three hours yesterday? if that and then another hour and a bit today so i think a a full organized day we could have done both but let's say it's a day per chassis to get it to this point then the next job is going to have to be a dry day for that because we are using a soft uh, a mineral wool insulation full fill uh, but we do need to thread our membrane back through we tried doing it to start with it kind of worked but i'm glad we didn't staple it all on because it would have pulled up the water Another thing I might do is just come in and put a few battens running 90 degrees to these underneath. Otherwise, you're relying on just the galvanized staples to hold up the membrane, which is holding up your insulation. If over the years they failed and rusted out, then your whole lot could, might, might drop. And then Joe's just gone along and tapped in and out everything to make sure it's finishing flush, if not maybe a, meet, uh, a millimeter over our steel ends. We know the steel ends are bang on factory finish. So by doing that, you can see even with our reclaimed joists, we've got 16 meters running pretty much straight all the way along. Well, that's it. That's our hour and a half in the rain done. Hopefully we one more full day, we can get the other ones built. Good morning, folks. This sun is out. Trailer one is done. We've got the same to do today i'm hoping we can get both done and then we'll be ready to insulate and board out tomorrow morning now if you haven't already subscribed to the channel we've got a whole load going on we've got this whole cabin to build a four or five bedroom cabin then the houses to build and all sorts going on here so you're not going to be short of content to watch for the next few years so tap that subscribe button down below head over to instagram you can find us there and you always get a bit of an update there ahead of time you don't need to start digging yet you and the dog are terrible oh yeah keep your sun hat on First job of the day is going to be to head around with the tractor and pick up another 30 joists, I think. Well, we've learned our lesson, let's always assume that we're going to need to get forks in. I don't know if that's going to be enough, but it's close. Materials are here. Now what we're going to do is try and shift. 
We learned our lesson basically because we've got two of everything. It means we can practice on one and get the other side right. We need na- we need names for these, Joe. His and hers, or, or like let's put it out, huh? Bill and Bob. Bill and Bob. Let's think of a. It's got to be a good name because we're going to be working on them for a while. We want to move this. Hodge and Podge. Hello, like yeah. We. Uh, uh, we need to move this one over that way with a channel down the middle, an aisle down the middle, big enough to get the tractor along. Then we can just drive along, slide off Joyce. Well oiled machine. Apart from the fact we've now got to shift the chassis and it's got eight wheels on it now. can't do it by hand. We should have just done it with the tractor originally. We're almost there. This space is probably big enough, but by the time we start putting cladding and things on the outside, we just need a little bit more space. So I think forks under the front and I'll just use the tractor. Right, I think we're pretty much there, give or take a centimetre or two. So we've got this nice aisle that we can wheel trolleys and tractors up, slide things off and uh, make it a little bit more efficient. So first up on this one, we've learned from this one, rather than trying to get that membrane down first, we're going to build the frame and then just get the forks under it and lift it, slide it in under when we're ready. So we, we can just get on and frame this, it'd be easier. That's why it's got a helix on it, because it's twisted. That's my logo for twisted. Well, yeah, but why is it, my point is, why is it... throw it down and discuss. No, I know. I just couldn't, couldn't even look at it anymore. It's twisted and bowed and warped. That's into pieces in a minute. Right, let me give you a bit of an explainer on the process. Um, it's probably self-explanatory, but if not, I'm nailing all of these off with 90 mil ring shanks, uh, which is just absolutely fine. And by the time we get this flooring on, it's gonna tighten everything and secure everything together anyway. Uh, if there was a slight twist, like on this side, we did put in a couple of screws, just pull it in and then we could carry on nailing. So we're just marking the side of the joist and an X. Now you can see, this one isn't too bad, but a millimeter, I probably wouldn't even bother doing too much about it. Some of these are a couple of mil different. So where it doesn't match up, we'll probably prioritize having a, well, we have prioritized having a slightly taller board on the rim around the outside. That way we can just run the electric plane over everything and bring them flush. In reality, when you've got 22 mil chipboard on joists, it soon evens it out. You remember all the old joists at the old house? and you worry you kind of put a spirit level over and you can see a few dips actually 
when it, when the flooring's on it, it evens it, tightens it up. So whilst Joe's marking and shifting things the other side, I've been going along one nail in the top of maybe four or five at a time. Do that both sides and then just coming in with the speed square, squaring it up and running another three or four in. Interestingly, when I've seen the way that these are built professionally, I'm not quite 100% sold on it. Yes, if you go Kingspan, like if we were going with PIR boards, this is the route we would have taken. We would have cut our pieces to size. We would have put the gapo tape around, which everything is up there in the barn. And we were gonna push our insulation down so it sat onto the steels. And we would end up with 100 mil on the outer, uh, outer surface, I guess, um, of our joists, but then have a nice service cavity on the warm side in between each. We could then run pipes or anything between. In reality, it's not gonna be that many pipes because we're using electric for most things um, above floor level. And the only things to go down, actually down and through will be waste pipes. And that's only an isolated couple of places. So I don't think we would have really used that service cavity anyway. But because they were rigid boards, they could have sat down onto the seals and be supported that way gapo tape holds them tight anyway but we knew that they weren't going to be dropping through of course now we switch to a mineral wall uh, we are going to need to support them that's why we're going with the membrane route now when you see these park homes being built from the few little bits that happen to be on youtube and they're mainly old school time lapses and it's hard to work out quite what's going on but it looks to me like they joist out like this and then they get some dpm sort of black polythene discreen type plastic and go over and in all of the joists now I'm not quite sure the reasoning for that because that's essentially acting like a vapor barrier or an impermeable layer and if you've got well maybe they have a secondary vapor barrier above but basically it means that if there's any moisture in your insulation between the joists because they go straight in with rock wool or whatever it can't dry out underneath so we are using this, um, we are insulating this just like you would with a suspended floor in a house. We're going with a breathable, it, sometimes people use netting, but a breathable heavy duty membrane underneath. It is not quite rodent proof, it's, it's pretty heavy duty, but obviously things could get through it. But the access to the underside is, is enough to prevent that. Also, we can build a skirt around the outside with some cladding and we'll just get more cats. But Either way, if uh, if you think Kingspan is rodent proof, think again. Before I forget to talk on that subject, Kingspan, PIR and PUR insulations, the foam insulations, even polystyrene. Birds love it, peck straight through it. Um, we've had two sheets. I mean, I built the pig thing with the, the, the pig house with them. And if you leave it exposed on the edge, like an offcut I left down there, they chew into it as well. Like everything, for some reason, things like eating it. I've seen mice go through it. Our chickens peck at it. Wild birds peck at it. So one, you don't want your own livestock or pets eating the stuff. But two, if you just had exposed Kingspan underneath, it's still not a deterrent. There's still a, a way through. So the only way to make a suspended floor or this type of cabin a rodent proof from underneath would be a mesh we were looking at six mil galvanized mesh over all of them and i don't th i think the cost benefit was not there so i'm sure there's a retrofit option if we had to we could probably come in with with wire from underneath but hopefully such wood i think it's wood yeah that's wood <laughs> um we won't need it all right delivery time well a new saw is probably on the cards at some point because things have changed a lot in the last seven years or however long i've had this i'm going to go back to a freud blade because they're thinner and probably sharper and to be fair the blade that's left in this one is just that multi-purpose blade that i use for cutting the steel reefing so we're not really being fair to the saw but only one bar if that left in the battery but let's see if it's any better we'll hit a nail first go
Yeah, the ten quid saw blade's a lot cheaper than a new saw. I think we'll last another year. Don't worry, Joe. New saw blade fixed it. No need for any more tools. These are the axle stands. Well, not really axle stands, are they? What are they? Support stands. That supposedly galvanised, but look more like someone's hit them with a silver aerosol. But I think they'll be just fine. So you can see they're just going to sit underneath the main members here and we'll be able to level out the whole chassis at this point so when we're building building walls and everything we can use the spirit level you remember back when we did the camper van conversion because the camper van is never level unless you put it up on axle stands you're always trying to square everything off the floor you can't use the spirit level for anything and it makes things a lot lot harder this will basically give us a, a level floor like any house and we'll be able to frame off the floor deck just like any other building the other thing is uh, these are intended so obviously we take the weight off the wheels once it's sighted so we'll actually have about 10 of these per chassis for now we've just got two each end these will also help with our idea of if our whole insulation layer is floating this high above the ground you've got to be a very very good mouse to get up here up here and somehow get up to the membrane under there so by going this route rather than conventional concrete blocks or anything like that it's kind of another way of making sure that we say rodent proof As we all know, these are reclaimed joists, so we're doing a little bit more fussing than we might have to if it was just regular structural grade kind of C24. So well, I'm going along with a little cheap electric plane, which has got battered blades from years of use on oak, but it should be fine. And I'm just going to knock down the high spots. Two chassis. Looking big, right? 96 square meters, I think it works out at, which is not a small dwelling by any standard. Right, Joe's nipped out for a couple of minutes, so I'm going to start trying to get some of these floorboards down. I haven't actually opened this yet, but it should be good. The fact that we ordered all this back in January and February and everything got slowed down, I kind of feel like we've won a little bit <laughs> because I think all of this, if we Cumulatively, it's probably gone up a thousand pounds, all of these materials, just for the floor, just over the course of two or three months. So let's get this lot loaded. These are super heavy. So it looks like whatever quantity we need was only three over a full pack. So this is what well, is Egger Protect. I just asked for the stuff that was weather resistant. You know, it's got a surface protection on it. But it looks like this one, you don't peel off when you're done. This is just the finished surface. It's almost like the plywood that you get on the scaffolding and also in these, these are the sheep decks from the trailer. A bit like a play park, you know, kids stuff. They look like us. They look like chickens, yeah. There's five of them. Uh, what car have you got? Volvo, uh, the Audi, I am not putting them in here. I think you've got the gist there. I don't even know how they got out. Maybe they're not ours. They're not our chickens. I don't think they're ours. Ours are better behaved than that. Nope, just some other brown chickens. Take your eyes off. That's their under pressure. So it has been a productive day, but uh, the hardest bit of all, we've been fine on the timber. Hardest bit for you was having to wheelie Crawl board around underneath. underneath. Joe was very kind to make me a dolly board, a wheelie thing 
to go under. It's not particularly comfortable, but... Um, the girls will love playing on it after, so there's a bonus. Yeah. But getting this membrane in, um, that probably is an easier way of doing it, but I wanted it all from the underside. And unless we were gonna, if you're gonna build like a shepherd's hut size one, we could probably do it and flip it. Yeah, but, these I mean, are too big. It's, we have it, spent a lot of time thinking about it. And we've learned a lot as enough. we've done it. Yeah. Different speed techniques and stuff. We figured it's gonna be easier rather than trying to pull it drum tight, but because it's just so long and if anything's slightly off, it just crinkles a little bit. We'll pull it as tight as we can and then if we feel we need to, we can just put a few battens underneath just to take the weight. But in a lot of places, we've got support anyway from the yeah. chassis. What's next then? More membrane. More membrane. And then maybe insulation and floorboard. Yeah, Which that should be way easier. Done tomorrow, all by himself. Well, I can get this membrane done this evening, maybe. Really? No, probably not. It's a two-person job, isn't it? I mean, just you've got to lift the frame up and slide it under. Yeah. All right, I'm not going to get it done, am I? That's why I kind of think we should do that before we do the membrane for that. One, because it will mean it's watertight. Yeah. Two, it will give us a bit of a yay before we hit that, because that isn't the nicest job to membrane, is it? No. All right, yeah, I'm up for that. Yeah. So all we've got to do, annoyingly, these are 1.5 meter membranes. We need to, there's a cover strip, well, a half strip to go down the middle. I can't remember how we said we were going to get it in now. We're just going to jack it up and slide it in. Yeah, I'm going to peg it down, staple it on one end so it stays there in the middle and then go up the other end and in my head, that works really well. But there we go, that's as far as we got. We will keep you in the loop via Instagram as well because we're doing a little bit more filming behind the scenes. Otherwise, the next video will be the insulating floorboards. It's all happening. Thanks for watching. Remember, if you can, do it yourself, and we'll see you next time. Well, Joe's final words. I won't manage it on my own. Well, no. there's no better way to motivate me. Big Jack, we'll jack it up. Well, we'll just basically do what Joe suggested we do, but I'll see if I can do it myself. I think by tomorrow we should be able to give a good solid mark out of 10 for ergonomics and um, maybe for design but you know its function is it's winning it's doing well come see what's going on have you that really is the end of the video a little bonus bit i better tidy up now and go in <laughs>